Good evening, folks, and happy Father's Day to all of you out there who are fathers, grandfathers, uncles, brothers. I mean, anybody that is a father-like figure to somebody, today we honor you. And so today I'm going to do a little bit different video. I'm going to do a video about my dad who is now passed on to heaven. Um, but I want to honor him in a special way tonight. There's so many ways I can honor him, but he was a big sports guy and he had four daughters of which I'm the oldest and that did not stop him whatsoever from teaching us to love sports. In fact, maybe in some ways it was good because he didn't have a son that he could teach all his sports ideas to, but he shared it with his daughters. So I might ramble a little bit and I thought about going in front of the camera, but actually I want to share with you some memorabilia tonight. Now, if you notice in the screen, starting off with a Reds cap and an Indian's cap and the Indian's cap is the Father's Day cap. And you're probably like Nina, you're a huge Indians fan. What's the Reds cap doing there? Well, Growing up, I was actually a Reds fan. And how that happened is I actually lived closer to Cincinnati than I do Cleveland, but my dad grew up in Cleveland. And just to antagonize, tease, whatever, my father, I decided to become ta -da, a Reds fan as a kid. Now, when I was growing up, it was a great time to be a Reds fan. We're talking the big red machine. So... It was a great time to be a Reds fan and probably not the best time to be an Indians fan when I was growing up. But we had a lot of fun going back and forth. And in fact, he supported my love of the Reds. Recently, I wanted to show this to you. I was going through some old boxes, trying to do some cleaning up since I'm quarantined at home. And I found these two tickets. If you can see... They're from a Cincinnati versus San Diego game, uh, September 17th, and the year was, uh, I know it's oh, 1972, it's there on the top. So my dad and I went to this game, I'm pretty sure, I mean, it's been a long time ago, I don't know who else would have taken me, I know he took me to a Reds game. It was a $4 tickets. And we sat in row two. He always got me good seats. And uh, I looked up the other day who won this game. And sadly, San Diego won. It's like 10 to 7 or something. But he was always taking me to sporting events. And he really... Um, here's the little card I got. He really got me very interested in baseball. Which is kind of funny because my dad didn't play baseball. He was very athletic, but he was known for his football prowess. And he actually played for uh, the town where I live, Ohio University, uh, for many years. And before I get to that story, I want to show you this picture. Let's see if I can get this in the camera. I'm going to have to move my hats out. This is my dad's high school picture. Like I said, he grew up in Cleveland. And uh, should I raise this up a little bit? Very handsome guy back in the day. So he grew up in Cleveland. He came to Ohio University his freshman year. And in December, he told his family, he was the youngest of 10 Russian immigrants, I'm not going back to college. And one of his older brothers said, yes, you are. But as things happen, he got drafted. So he went into World War II. He was in the Navy on a um, destroyer stationed in the South Pacific. There's a lot of great tales about that. Again, this is about sports tonight. But in this, he always told me about a funny basketball game he played in high school. And the coach said to him, all right, Sudnik, I'm putting you in, but Whatever you do, don't shoot the basket. Well, of course, when somebody tells you don't do something. So he shot and it went over the backboard and brrr, bounced off the wall on the backboard. And he said the coach yelled at him, 
I told you not to shoot. So he wasn't uh, the basketball star, but he was the football star. And he has a brother who was a great uh, basketball player and another brother who was a great um, baseball player. So lots of baseball in my family's history. Also on my mother's side too. Now my mom said when they met in college, he came back after the war and when they met, it was, uh, I think, 48, 49. And she said he couldn't talk enough about the Cleveland Indians winning the World Series in 1948. So part of what I'm doing this summer is I'm trying to come up to speed on that summer to relive the memory and kind of connect me with him. So I got that book. And where's my other book? Oh, I don't have the other book with me. It's about the AL pennant race in 1948. So, all right. Now, let's go back to my dad's um, football history here. And this was a sports flashback in our local paper many years ago. Uh, I'm going to read this real quick. Uh, I know that some of you might be interested in hearing it. So, my dad's last name was Sudnick. On October 15th, 1949... On October 15, 1949, was a red-letter day for Ed Sudnick as far as Ohio University football career was concerned in several respects. Although he was leading scorer on the Bobcat grid team at that point of the season, all of his points had been via his kicking. So he was the, uh, play, uh, the uh, place kicker. He had never scored a touchdown through both high school and the first four and one-half years of his college career. But then came a trip to his native Cleveland for a Mid-American Conference game with against Western Reserve at League Park. It looked like the Bobcats were going to come up on the short end of the score until Sudnick led the team down the field, capping the drive with a six-yard run in the closing seconds and the point-after kick, which deadlocked the score at 7-7. He had come close to scoring in high school once, running 51 yards, only to be run out of bounds just inches short of the goal line. Ironically, he had been the subject of a feature story in The Messenger the day before what was to be his big day in Cleveland. Sednick had begun his collegiate grid career in 1942, winning the first his first football letter, but then went into the Navy. When he returned after the war, the year which he had played, was dropped as far as football eligibility was concerned, still leaving him with four years of playing time. Although he was a halfback in addition to his kicking duties, he was used mostly on the defense because of a shoulder injury, which made it necessary for him to wear a shoulder brace. Prior to the Western Reserve game, Sutton had scored 13 points, including two field goals and seven extra points. He held the Bobcat record for consecutive extra points, incidentally, at 18. The streak had been halted the previous week against Kent when a second attempt at what had been a successful kick only to be nullified by a penalty missed its mark. So, a little bit of my dad's football history. Um, I found these... I, I, so, let's go back to the 1948 Indians. Sorry, I'm hopping all over. So, I decided I was going to pick up some um, vintage cards... So I've been talking with Rick, the vintage collector, and I've got this got this Larry Doby, which it's such a beautiful card, 1951 Bowman. So I think I'm going to try to pick up some Doby cards. I know they're very expensive, so I might have to settle for lower grades, but that's okay. It's the card, not the grade, as I've been taught. All right. Uh, let's see. So my dad did go into the Navy, and I brought out this picture. I wanted to tell you a little bit about this. This is a fun story. So this is my dad right here, and that's his brother, William, Bill. And these are their, that's my dad's Navy buddy, and this is um, my uncle's Air Force buddy. Well, my uncle served in the European front, and my dad served in the South Pacific. And they never saw each other. But when the war was over and they both came to New York City with their uh, respective um, Navy and Army, they both separately went into this bar 
and they ran into each other. I mean, is that freaky or what? So those were two happy dudes, Ed and Bill. And I love that picture and I cherish it. Okay, what else do I have to show you? Well, my dad and I used to go golfing <laughs> and I found this old golfing cart. Now you can see my score is not very good. And we played with his best friend, Dan. So Ed, Dan, and Nina. And yeah, I've got a lot of holes with nines on them, but we had a great time. And they were so nice to let me play. And Dan especially would, would coach me, um, help me to improve my game, which it did eventually. This was at a golf course in Ravenna, Ohio, called Windmill Lakes Golf Course. I don't know the era. Probably the late 70s was when we were there. Okay, so uh, a snapshot, and I think uh, one more picture after this. So this is uh, at a family reunion. We used to always do a balloon toss and an egg toss. So you can see my dad. If you look there closely, you can see the balloon coming towards him. And he never, ever dropped the egg or the balloon. He had a very a great style where the ball would come in and and he would just take the balloon, swing his arms back and his legs back, and he rarely ever lost this game. And here he is with my cousin, trying to give him a hard time. My dad was a big jokester. So I love looking at these pictures. It takes me back. We had some great times at his family reunion. So I'll wrap this up with a final picture. This was, well, probably in his last year on this earth. Um, he and my mom and I, this is my mom, who thankfully is still with us, um, went to a park that is um, a beautiful park. You can see the lake in the background and the hills. And this was a park where my parents went on uh, one of their first dates in college. So, they really treasured that trip and I will forever treasure that that card and picture of him. So happy Father's Day to my father. Uh, I owe you a lot and I know uh, you would be very proud of your Cleveland Indians. You didn't get to see the World Series